think I'd better work up in the North Meadow today. Fine. That'll give us a good start. Wait a minute. Got a shopping list for you. Hmm. Lipstick, shampoo, face powder. Are you dolling up for anybody I know? Well, it could be. When will you be home? Well, it depends on how long it takes to get the garden harrow fixed. <laughs> project. Well, don't you remember? Uh, Timmy and Boomer are going to build a lean-to today. Lean-to? Out of those old boards you said we could have. Oh, yes, yes, the old boards. Well, where are they? In the woods. We've already gotten the ridge pole in place. Well, that's fine, Timmy, but, uh, well, let's not run off with the whole tool chest. To begin with, I thought we agreed no saws. It's just a little one. Big enough to cut off a finger. Those boards are all cut in short pieces. You can use them as they are. Those are nails. Fine. Just watch your fingers when you're hammering. Two screwdrivers. Won't one be enough? Especially since you're using nails. I guess so. We're holding the nails while we hammer. And, uh, this? That's for playing ball. When we're finished building the lean-to. Oh. oh. Well, uh, put these away, son. You'll be in business. Okay, Dad. Timmy. Dad's going into Capital City. Now is your last chance if you want to ask him any questions about the lean-to. I know how to build it. I looked it up in Boomer's handicraft book. Looked it up, huh? Well, that's the way to do things. <laughs> Bye, Ruth. Be home later. You going to introduce your friend? She's not my friend. She's my cousin. Well, you can still introduce me. I'm Millicent Radcliffe from Capital City. I'm visiting my little country cousin for the day. Little? Well, I'm very happy to meet you, Millicent. I'm Mrs. Martin, and that's Timmy, and this is Lassie. Oh, Lassie. Oh, Lassie. You're simply gorgeous. Oh, I love the country. It's fascinating. We're stuck with her for the day. Boomer. Well, we don't have time to play with girls. We're building things. Now, I'm sure that Millicent can be very helpful. Oh, you're so pretty. Yes, you are. Look at this. A drill. We can make peepholes. Peepholes nothing. That's to drill holes for the rawhide thongs. Rawhide thongs? Sure, to tie the boards to the ridge pole. We're going to build it Indian style, aren't we? We are not. You need real logs for Indian style. And besides, I got a hammer and nails. But it's my handicraft book, and I say we do it Indian style. It's my wood, and I say we nail it. Now, boys. But you agreed to share it 50 50. That doesn't mean you're going to do the whole thing. Timmy. I'm not trying to. Yes, you are. Boys, for heaven's sake. But he said I only meant... Look, if you expect to accomplish anything, you're just going to have to work out some sort of a compromise. Okay. Yes, ma'am. How do you make a compromise? Compromise. Well, that means you uh, meet each other halfway. Oh. You run along now. Go ahead. I'll bring some refreshments to you in a little while. Thank you, Mrs. Okay. Martin. Boys are such children. I don't 
those the boards? What's wrong with them? Why, they're dirty. I'm not going to play with them. We're not playing, Millicent. We're building something. Indian style. No. It's more fun to hammer with nails. It's more fun to drill holes. I told you you could drill peepholes. Who ever heard of peepholes in a lean-to? What's wrong with them? It'll rain in, that's what. Boomer, Mrs. Martin said for you to compromise. Now, how are we going to do that? Build half the lean-to your way, half Boomer's way. Are all girls that stupid? Except Lassie and Mom. They don't count. Lassie's a dog and your mom is a mom. Well, you suit yourselves. I'm going for a walk. You better not. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my boss. You'll get lost. Me get lost? Really, Boomer. Just last week, I went to my music lesson on the bus all by myself. And I got change of 50 cents. In Capital City? Of course. Gosh. There's a big difference between Capital City and this woods. He's right. Millicent, you come back here. I'm supposed to watch her. I know. Go out there, her girl, and don't let her get far away. Go on. <laughs> Last you'll watch her. flowers to make a hat. Oh, Lassie. Thank you. Here, I'll make you look real pretty. Okay, now. Yeah. Poor Lassie. Look what Millicent's doing to her. Lassie likes it. Yeah, let's get busy. What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? Boomer, Indian style is no good. It won't hold the boards together, and this lean to has got to be watertight. Indian style was good enough for the Indians. I always let you have your way. Oh, yeah? When? Yesterday. I wanted to play football, but you wanted to play marbles. So what? So we played marbles. Saturday, I wanted to go bike riding, but you wanted to pick berries. And last Tuesday... Okay, okay. Here, hold this. Fascinating. I said, let's go! <laughs> 
water. Gee. Don't move, Millicent. I won't. But get me out. Please. What'd you come in here for anyhow? I was just exploring. We're not allowed in this cave. It's dangerous. How did I know? Let's try again. No, I'll fall. <laughs> Lassie, go home for help. Go home for help. <laughs> Please don't let go. We won't. Boy, I hope Lassie finds somebody. Well, that project was a big success. Now climb! 
time. How? Oh, hold the rope. Use both hands. Lipstick, shampoo, and face powder. Now you can be beautiful. Yep. Where's Timmy? Oh, he and the Boomer are out in the woods. I was just going to go get them. Well, let's go. I want to see how that lean-to is progressing. <laughs> Don't you expect any miracle? Okay, Timmy, it's your turn. Teamwork. That's right, Dad. Lassie showed us how it works. Why, hello, Miss Hasley. Hello, Mr. Martin. How's Timmy? Oh, he's fine now, thanks. He had a touch of fever night before last, so Ruth kept him in yesterday. He, uh, he's around here somewhere. Why don't you come in? Ruth always has the coffee hot. Oh, thank you, but I just stopped by for a minute. Gee, Miss Hazlitt! Wait, don't go away! It's Miss Hazlitt! She's here! Hi, Miss Hazlitt! Hi, Timmy. I can see you're feeling better. I'm feeling fine. Mom thought I was coming down with something, but I wasn't. Good. Hello, Mrs. Martin. Hello, Miss Hazlitt. This is a nice surprise. I just stopped by to see if Timmy could go on an outing with his class Monday for nature study. Like we did before? All day? Mm-hmm. I can go, can't I, Dad? Of course. Won't you come in for a few minutes? Oh, no, thank you. I have so many things to do. And the school board meeting is at 5, remember? Yes, we're very unhappy about it. So am I. It's the school budget. The first thing a teacher learns is the inflexibility of the budget. Well, it, uh, it isn't final yet, Miss Hazlitt. We, uh, we still have today's meeting. Well, don't count on it. I'm not. But to lose a wonderful teacher like you just doesn't seem... Thank you, Mrs. Martin. I like Calverton, the people, most of all, the children. <laughs> but I have to stay off that subject, otherwise... Please come and have supper with us some night, won't you? I'd like to very much. Well, goodbye. I'll see you at the meeting. Bye. Goodbye, Timmy. I'll see you on Monday. Bye, Miss Hazlitt.
Can't you talk that nasty old Mr. Burke into cutting somewhere else? He's not nasty, or old for that matter. I've tried to talk them out of it, but we're $200 over budget. Something's got to give. And so the children have to do the giving by losing their teacher. No, Ruth. Mom, isn't Miss Hazlitt going to be our teacher anymore? I'm afraid not, Timmy. Not after this term. Why? I thought teachers were supposed to belong to the kids. Well, they do, in a sense. Well, good teachers want their pupils to feel that way. But, but then why must she go away? Well, you see, Timmy, the school board hasn't enough money to pay her salary, so they've got to hire a teacher who's less expensive. But I like Miss Hazlitt. Of course you do, dear. You'll have a lot of teachers before you're through school. Sometimes we all have to give up something we can't afford. You understand that, don't you? Well, the school board feels that it can't afford to keep your teacher. Do you understand that too, Timmy? I think I'll go over to Boomer's. For a measly five dollars, the children have to lose someone they love. How do you figure that? Well, you said it was $200 a year, didn't you? That's right. Well, that's five dollars a week is all. Well, in a budget, five dollars is still a lot of money. <laughs> we might get him? Probably. Boy, he was awful. Mom says it costs five dollars. What does? If we want to keep Miss Hazlitt. If we could only get the five dollars. That's an awful lot of money. I know, but if we got it, then she wouldn't have to go away. How are we going to get it? I don't know. How much money you got in your bank? Eighty cents, I think. But I'm only allowed to put in, not take out. Me neither. But I sure don't want that old Mr. Platt for my teacher. Hi, Lassie. Hi, Pop. What are you doing? Nothing. What are you going to do? Nothing. We got two old days. We ought to do something. What's the matter? We gotta get five dollars. Five dollars? Why? If we wanna keep our teacher, we got to. Miss Hazlitt? Who says? The school board says. Oh, you gonna have to pay to go to school now? Yep, looks like it. The only way I know how to get money is to ask your father for it. My dad works at the Calverton Bank, and he says they give you money if you ask. They give it to anybody? Sure, if you got lateral. What does lateral mean? I don't know exactly. Let's go ask somebody that knows. Well, hello, Lassie. How are you? Good to see you. Hi, hello, Mr. boys. Hi, Hi, hello. What's the matter? You look like the world is about to fall in. Mr. Teal. Does the bank give you money like Bill says? Well, I don't know. How does Bill say? He says you need lateral. <gasps> you gotta have lateral, huh? Well, I think Bill is right. You've gotta have collateral if you want to make a loan. Now, if I want to borrow money from the bank, the first thing I do is to sign a note. That's a promise to pay. And I also give collateral. That's additional security. Something like my farm here. So that if for some reason I can't pay the loan, the bank can sell the collateral and get its money, thereby protecting the depositors, you see? Mm. Were you thinking of making a bank loan? We gotta get some money, Mr. Teal. Had you ever thought of earning it? We're too little. Nobody will hire us. Oh, I don't know. I've got a lot of potatoes I gotta get dug here. I'll give you a quarter piece if you give me a hand. Oh, oh boy! Oh, gee! Come on, girl, we can find something for you, too. There's sacks, boys. You can dig them with your hands. That's it. That's... Come on, Lassie. Come 
figure out, girl. Come on. That's fine, lad. Thank you very much. That's enough, boys. Just leave the socks there. I'll get them. Now, that was a very fine job, and I'm going to pay you off. Timmy, there's a quarter for you. And Roy, Bill, now you've got some lateral. And there you are, Boomer. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, Lassie, I guess you earned something, too. Here's a nice, shining quarter. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, boy. Thanks a lot. Thanks, boy. OK. Gee. Hey, Boomer. Come here. <laughs> yeah. Here's a dime for Mike. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can find somebody else that needs potatoes, Doug. Yeah, making money is easy, isn't it? Mister? Got any potatoes to be dug? Nope. You want to work? Think you can stack this here wood I've been cutting? Sure. I'll pay you 10 cents each if you do it fast. OK. Lassie can help, too. Who's Lassie? My dog. That one? No. That one. Pick it up, girl. Pick it up. Okay, she can work too. But step on it. I want to play baseball in half an hour. kids want. Got some work we can do? No. We've got experience. We can dig potatoes. Potatoes are all in. We can sack wood and feed the animals. You kids run along. I got work to do. I'm getting tired. We can't stop yet. We haven't got enough money. What time is it? Why are you always asking what time it is? Because our school board meeting is at 5 o'clock. Thank you, boys. Thank you very much. Something's wrong, mister. Lash wouldn't bark like that unless it was emergency.
Did you see that? <coughs> well, that's a remarkable dog you've got there, son. I know, sir. What's your name? Timmy. And that's Lassie. Well, Timmy, you and the boy certainly deserve that money you were trying to earn. But we didn't work. You got any idea what this lamb is worth? About five dollars. Five dollars? This is a prize lamb. It's worth at least 50. Gee. We're gonna get paid. How about 25 cents a piece for you boys and oh, 50 four. cents for Lassie? Gee. Two, three, Gone. one. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thanks, mister. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Just a minute. I'm tired. What time do you suppose it is? It looks like it's getting pretty late. Let's see how much money we have. There must be five dollars there. Maybe we got too much. How much, Roy? Five dollars easy. Let me carry it. It's my handkerchief. We better get going. The old school board's gonna be plenty surprised. Yeah. We'll just tell them we want to keep our teacher. And then give them the money. What's the matter? You got the money, Boomer? You took it, remember? I lost it. You sure? Where'd you lose it? I don't know. We gotta go back. Do we have to go all the way back? When did we see it last? When we counted it on the bridge. But we could have lost it anywhere. We gotta find it. Come on. a rabbit. Here? Yes. They're due now. Yeah, I hope we can get through this quick. I've got to milk after I get home. We're farmers too, Tom. Work's always waiting. Paul here thinks maybe we're making a mistake letting the teacher go. No mistake. We gotta get a cheaper teacher. As long as we can find one who'll work for 24 100 and has a permit to teach, she's hired. But it isn't as simple as that. Why isn't it? Save your strength for the meeting.
Maybe somebody's already found it. If somebody's found it, what's the use looking? What's the use of arguing about this until Burke gets here? Where is Sam? Here I am. Sorry I'm late, but some of my sheep broke out and I had to mend the fence. Say, Miss Hazlitt's due here at 5 o'clock. We better hurry. Let's, uh, let's decide who's going to be the new teacher. Any objections? Yes. I'd like to ask the board to reconsider Miss Hazlitt's replacement next term. We've been all over that, Paul. With the cost of supplies going up, we've got to cut somewhere. I know, but if we can recheck the budget, we... We paired it to the bone, you know that. He thinks she's indispensable. Not exactly, John. I just think her work is excellent. We ought to take that into consideration, even if it means going over the budget. Nothing doing. we got to live within our means. So's the school. I don't think we should save money at the expense of our children. The kids seem to like her. That usually means they ain't learning a thing. Tom, are you with Paul there? Well, he was explaining things to me. It makes good sense to me. We're all agreed that it's important to start our young people out right. And a good teacher is essential. One who can give the children the desire to learn. Children don't want to study. They've got to be taught to like it. And every good teacher knows that if she can awaken that interest in a child, he'll never lose it. All right. Don't get hot under the collar, Paul. We all know that Miss Hazlitt's a good teacher, but we can get another, cheaper. Sure we can. Sure, maybe we could get one even better. Or anyway, just as good. I hope we can. be there. My dad says they talk and talk and talk. Well, let's go. <clears throat> well, uh, we're sorry, Miss Hazlitt, but we just don't see how we can manage your salary next term. Well, please don't be upset, Mr. Burke. I understand. Timmy. What do you want, boys? We're having a meeting here. A man with a sheep. What's he doing here? Timmy, you shouldn't have come in here. We had to. We had to see the school board. We brought the money. Let him come in, Paul. What's on your mind, boys? Here's the five dollars, Mr. Burke. I'm Mr. Burke, Timmy. What's the money for? For Miss Hazlitt, so she won't have to go away. We lost the money, or we'd have been here sooner. Mousy found it. What money are you talking about, Timmy? The five dollars. I heard Mom say we needed a measly five dollars. Don't you remember? We've been working all day, digging potatoes and stacking wood and saving Mr. Burke's sheep. Timmy, your mother didn't mean just one five. For just a minute, Paul. <laughs> Are we to understand that you boys have been working all day just to keep your teacher? Yes, sir. And uh, you've got five dollars here. We think so. We don't count money so good yet. You boys really like your teacher? Oh, oh yes, yes of course. course. And you think that five dollars will keep her here? Haven't you heard about it? Well, of course he has. Well, I, uh, I vote we keep Miss Hazlitt on. Well. Since the boys have the money we need, I suppose. John? Well, all right, boys. Miss Hazard will be here next term. Oh, boy! Yay! Oh, you, <laughs> Where'd your wife get that $5 idea? $5 a week. Uh, you mean you're going to keep their money? Well, we have to, don't we? I haven't got the heart to tell them they didn't pay for their teacher. Only one thing. I'd rather chip in my share than go over budget. Oh, you. Oh. This is the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me, boys. 
It isn't often that a teacher finds out what her pupils think of her, like I have. You're the best teacher in the whole world. Better than anybody. Better than old Mr. Platt. <laughs> the boy sure taught us a lesson today. How important a good teacher really is. All except Paul, that is. Oh, uh, I had an advantage. Timmy taught me this morning. Last year, earned more money than any of us. She did? Come here, Lassie. Come on, Lassie. Thank you, too, Lassie. <laughs> <laughs> young fella. That ought to fix your wagon. Hmm. We'll see about that. Three. My fighting blood is just getting all boiled up now. May I borrow my son's attention? But, Mom, I gotta give Uncle Petrie another chance. Oh, only for a minute, dear. I need his help. I have to make up my mind if this jelly's good enough to enter in the fair. Well, that ought to stop any game. That's good, because I want your opinion, too. Mmm. Ah. Mommy. Well, what's the verdict? Well, it tastes like first prize jelly to me. Me too. Me too. Oh, I'm not sure you can be trusted. It took you too long to make up your mind. <laughs> Lassie hasn't even touched it. Well, that's the verdict. I think Lassie's hearing something outside. Oh, it's just the wind. I'll open the door so she can see there's nothing there. Poor thing, it's half drowned. Well, cats have nine lives. I only got one. That, that wet kicks up my rheumatism. Let's close the door. Oh, now, wait a minute. Couldn't we... Oh, come on, let's take it in just till we're sure the storm's over. Of course. But what about Lassie? You expect her to put up with the cat? <laughs> yellow color. Can we name him Mustard? Yes, I think that's a very good name for him. Uh, let me examine that sick paw. Can we keep him, Dad? May we, dear. May we keep him, Dad? Can we? Well, uh... Lassie likes Mustard, don't you, girl? <laughs> We'll give him a try. Mustard's gonna stay. Well, <clears throat> my diagnosis is that uh, this cat must have sprained his ball. Is it bad? Well, I know medicine that'll make him as good as new. We buy the ingredients in town tomorrow. Some uh, jixon weed, Indian herbs, snake oil. Dr. Petrie, would you mind prescribing a little sleep for Timmy? It's way past his bedtime. Can Mustard sleep with Lassie and me? No, dear. I think one pet in the room is enough. Mustard sleeps in the barn. He's got a big job to do. Can't he sleep with us and tell Uncle Petrie's medicine makes him well? <sighs> Thanks, Dad. Come on, Lassie. Last one.
one in bed is Lazy Bone. you go to fish or play, remember... I'll feed the chickens, sort the nails, and gather the eggs before I do anything. Good boy. Well, let's get started. I want to get back by noon. Mm, just hold your horses, Paul. It won't take a minute. There. Now, just you stay there and take it easy. As soon as I get back from town, I'll brew up a salve. We'll have you good as new in no time. <laughs> All right, wind her up. Poor thing can hardly budge. I'll move the saucer so he only have to stick out his tongue. Bother you. That old fly was buzzing around your head. I'll ask Mom for some more milk. Good girl. Take care of mustard. Boy. He spent 65 cents of his own money picking on a mess of herbs. Oh, you're a kind man, Uncle Petrie. Oh, I'm kind, too. He spent an hour of my time picking that stuff out. Wait a minute, Lassie. Just as soon as Timmy helps me carry this stuff inside. Look in that barn, and you'll take back what you said about my wasting your time picking out those herbs. <laughs> Mustard, you're a real champion. That grain scavenger must have put up a pretty good fight, but it was no match for you. No, sir, not even with that injured paw. <laughs> Mustard, the winner and new champion. I apologize. 
Yeah. What do you say, Mustard? Now, if you can keep those pests from feasting on my corn, you'll be the star boarder around here. This calls for a celebration. Milk is on the house. Come on, Lassie. Oil six times, cover tight, and leave to steep overnight. You stir to the left 13 times and to the right six. No, twice right. Oh, I stir twice the right. <laughs> Sounds more like a prescription to open a safe rather than heal a cat. Hmm. Here, Lassie. Valor in line of duty for ridding our barn of a grain thief, we raise our glasses in a toast to welcome Mr. Mustard as a full-fledged member of the Martin family. Yes. did it before. Well, are you going to stay here the rest of the night? Well, let's go to bed. Lassie, you know, eh, Geeter? Let's go, Lassie. Phew, that stuff smells. Oh, worse the medicine smells, the quicker the patient gets well. How much longer do we have to soak him? Well, just about uh, now. There we are. I got him. Mm. Better. Much better. 
much better. What happens now, Doctor? <laughs> yeah, what he needs is a little gentle exercise so that leg won't stiffen up. I'll take him. All right, but no running or dashing about. Just easy and slow, you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Come on, Lassie. Come on. Come on, Lassie. No, Lassie. I don't want you to be mad at Mustard. I want you to be friends. Now, how about going for a walk? No, Lassie. Not so fast. Uncle Peter said Mustard had to walk slow. Come on, Mustard. Let's go, Lassie. Bother those chickens. <laughs> no, Lassie, you mustn't. Stop being jealous of Mustard. You have to be friends. You take it easy, Mustard. We'll wait for you on the other side of the woods. Bye. Come on, Lassie. <laughs> from that mountain lion. And you're bad. There's nothing wrong with your paw. I just saw you running and jumping. Come on, Lassie. Let's go home and tell them about mustard. the poor cat. He limped over to me and, well, just look at him. Really, I don't know what's gotten into Lassie. Lassie! Mustard's gone! It isn't! Lassie! Whoa! You catch your breath. Now, now, take it easy, boy. I got my breath now. Go ahead. A big mountain lion attacked Mustard, and he ran and jumped and everything. There wasn't anything wrong with his paw at all. Now, Timmy. But, Mom... Mom says that Lassie chased the cat. You don't understand. Lassie saved Mustard from a mountain lion. And then Mustard made believe he couldn't walk. And when I told him he was bad, he ran home. Hmm. That's some story, boy. It's not a story. Mustard's a storyteller. <laughs> Lassie never ate those eggs at all. Mustard did. And nothing's wrong with his paw at all. Lassie proved it. Timmy, dear, you mustn't let yourself get so worked up. But, Mom... I know, dear. We think it's wonderful that you love Lassie so much. Sure, son, but, uh... uh I have an idea. Let's, uh, 
Let's just go into the house and simmer down, shall we? We can have some cookies and a nice drink to cool off. Hmm? Well, that's a first-rate idea. She ran away, and I don't blame her. Hungry enough to eat a steak raw. Well, the menu is leftovers. Well done. Anything you do is well done. And I must say, there's nothing like a plow to sharpen a man's appetite. Seems to me a couple of things are missing. Now, Timmy. Oh, Lassie. I wonder what's keeping them. been the same ever since Mustard set foot in this house. It ain't fair to blame a cat for what a dog does. You don't suppose Timmy's right, do you? Oh, it's a little unbelievable. Oh, my jam. <coughs> Jumping Jehoshaphat. Who'd have believed it? And Timmy didn't invent those stories. Any cat that can jump up to my jam shelf is well enough to do anything. He also could have leaped up and gotten at those eggs in the chicken house. Oh, Paul, I'm worried now. Let's call Boomer and see if Timmy's over there. Uncle Petrie... I'll take the car and go the back way down to the creek. Never mind, Jenny. Thanks. Oh, Timmy, I'm so glad you're here. We, um, we have something to tell you about Mustard. You were right, darling. I apologize, Lassie. To you too, son. <coughs> me too. <coughs> Limping me out of 60 cents worth of medicine. You can put that paw down, Mustard. You're just an old faker. If you were able to jump up to that shelf, you can just as easily jump down. I'll have to warm up the leftovers again. Uh-uh. Let those leftovers be leftover. This calls for a celebration. Let's go out to eat. Oh, Paul, it's so expensive. Well, that's how we'll pay for the lessons that Timmy and Lassie taught us. Well, I've been educated, too. I'll pay half, Paul. <laughs> Come on, Mom. Let's go. Well, all right. Lassie's going, too, isn't she? Well, sure. She's a guest of honor. She's going to get a big, meaty boom. Uncle Petrie. You help me get those dishes and put them in the icebox. We're going out for dinner. Look, over there.
It's More mustard. mustard. I was beginning to feel sorry about leaving him alone while we go off for dinner. Nobody need ever feel sorry for that cat. And it all goes to prove that animals aren't much different than humans. Some of them like mustard take, while others like Lassie give. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, girl? <laughs>